Uh, thank you again for joining me on the continuation of a series on probability. Now we look into addition rule. Addition rule. And under this, there are two concepts or two terms you should always watch out for when you are dealing with addition rule. When do you sum up your probability when you are solving it? Watch out for two things. One, mutually exclusive events and non-mutually exclusive events. These are the two things we we'll watch out for. You can see on the screen, look out for mutually exclusive events. <clears throat> and there are two, um, what can I call, uh, there are two connectives. Yes, I can call them conjunctions. Yes, there are conjunctions really. You have or and you have either. So any of these two, when they are using the question, probability question, you are using the addition rule. And with the fact you are using the addition rule, please check check what I did here. I said note. Do not jump on questions relating to addition rule. Be sure if it is mutually exclusive or non mutual or non mutually exclusive events. Now that will, that will make me ask, or that will make you ask yourself, what are mutually exclusive events? There are events such that when one occurs, the other one cannot occur. The occurrence of one will hinder the occurrence of the other, which means two of them cannot occur at the same time. Example, mm, cooking on a gas and a stove at the same time. Cooking a particular food on a gas and on a stove. It's not possible. Yes, walking and flying. You can't be walking and you are flying. So they are mutually exclusive events. And what does that mean? Event A and event B as a disjoint, as a no, they are disjoint. They are disjointed. Yes, they are disjointed. There is no point of intersection. So I will still write that. I will still draw that out diagrammatically. Now look at this. The mutually exclusive event, which you can be the probability of A or B. So this means probability of A or B, and that implies that we have probability of A. Plus the probability of B, then minus probability of A intersect B. Then I say, like I said before, for mutually exclusive events, it has no intersection. So that's why I said this tends to zero. I indicate that zero. So which means for mutually exclusive events, you're going to be having only probability of A or probability of B to be equal to probability of A plus probability of B. And probability of event A occurred plus probability of event B occurred. That's all. But for non mutually exclusive event, there can be an intersection. Yes, you can be cooking and at the same time be washing. There are two mutually exclusive events. So as you watch simultaneously, are doing both of them simultaneously. So there will be a point of intersection. There will be a particular time where you are trying to fix this and you are doing this at the same time. It's possible. Yes. So those are mutually exclusive events, and under that the intersection will not be zero, the, it, it will not be a disjoint, so we add probability of A or B to be equals probability of A plus probability of B plus the a minus probability of A intersect B, such that this will not tend to zero, that is probability of event A to event B minus probability of the intersection of the two events. So let's take it a bit further, let me show this diagrammatically before we solve our questions if you have um, look at this We have event A and B. Look at them.
There is no point of intercession. No point of intercession. This means they are mutually exclusive events. But if they are mutually, non-mutually exclusive events, if they are non-mutually exclusive events, you see there will be a point of intersection. There will be a point of intersection. And that there will be the point. Can you see that? These are non-mutually exclusive event. That means A intercept B is not equal to zero. The intersection is not empty. In fact, I can do this. Yes, it's not empty. So you have that. Now let's go to the questions before us. If you have uh, a background knowledge of what I'm trying to talk about now. So the question says, in a basket of fruit, there are five grapes, ten apples, and eight oranges. What is the probability that a fruit peak is a grape or a orange it should be an orange that should be here a fruit peak is a grape or an orange <coughs> you have this let's go the probability of picking a grape and probability of G of course how many grapes do we have probability of an event over probability of summation of, of Summation of F, forgotten. This is experimental probability. So we have um, 5 upon the sum of all the fruits is 15 plus 8. That is what? 23. Then the probability. Of orange is 8 upon 23. So the probability of G grape or orange should be the probability of grape plus the probability of orange. Don't forget, it should not be minus probability of the inter of their intersection. But they have the intersection that is zero, so you don't need to write it. So the answer will be 5 upon 23 plus 8 upon 23. And that will be equal to 13 upon 23. So we finalize there. That is our answer. The next question. The question says you have um, an event implies obtaining prime numbers. It implies obtaining prime numbers. And B implies an event A. There's A there. An event A implies an event A implies obtaining an event A implies obtaining prime numbers. So we have a to be what are the prime numbers that we have one is not a prime number we have two we have three then a prime number and being plus of you okay even number in a single true of a die oh good so we need the prime numbers in a single true of a die we have two three 
we have 5 as all for prime as event A then for event B is what even numbers that will be 2 4 6 now the question is find probability of event A or B number 1 probability of event A is how many prime numbers we have 3 the whole space 6 on the whole die we can find 6 numbers then probability of B is also 3 upon 6 I see this because we have 3 even numbers but there is an intersection probability of A intersect probability of B that means we have 2 we have 2 A intersects B is equal to 2 isn't it? So the probability of A intersect B, we have only one element, and that is 1 upon 6. So now, probability of A or B and be equal to probability or we can find the probability of event A or B. That will be probability of event A, 3 upon 6, plus 3 upon 6. Then minus the probability of A intersect B. This will be minus 1 upon 6. So let me wipe this side so that we can write our final answer there. What will that be? So that will be equal to the probability. A or B that can be equal to 1 over 1 minus 1 over 6 that will be 6 6 minus 1 and that can be equal to 5 upon 6 is that noted yes get more examples if you have questions make them known on my comments please like comment share and do subscribe please do subscribe that's a way you can help me thank you very much for your time